Hello everyone, I'm Sebastian Y, and welcome to Econometrics. In this video, we're going to estimate linear probability models in Stata. A linear probability model is an OLS regression with a dummy variable as the dependent variable. Estimating the regression is really no different than any other regression, but the interpretation is different because the fitted value is the probability that the dependent variable is 1 given the values of the explanatory variables. I have the Mraz dataset from Wildridge loaded up. This is a dataset of women from 1975. We are trying to predict the probability that a woman will enter the labor force. Let's start with a simple regression of in LF, that's in the labor force, 0 or 1, on the variable n wife inc. This is calculated as total family income minus the woman's wage, so essentially this is the husband's income. We can see that we get a negative coefficient estimate for the husband's income. Let's think about how we can interpret that. Pulling up the data browser, we can go over and look at that variable. This is the husband's income in thousands of dollars. So if we go back to our regression results, we can see that for every thousand dollars of husband income, the probability that the wife will join the labor force goes down by about half a percentage point. We want to say this in terms of percentage points, not percent, so we don't get this confused with log models. We could extend this to say that if the husband's income goes up by 10,000, then the probability that the wife will join the labor force goes down by about 5 percentage points. We can generate some predicted values. I'll call this NLF hat with the XB option. We can check out the data browser and look at this. You can see that these numbers are all between 0 and 1. These are probabilities. One thing you'll notice about LPM regressions in general is the R squared is very low. And the reason for that is that our dependent variable can only be 0 or 1, and since we are predicting probabilities, those are usually pretty far away from 0 and 1. This is just a feature of LPM regressions. It's nothing to worry about. Let's enrich this model a little bit and run a regression of NLF on the husband's income, and also add in education, age, kids under the age of 6, and kids age 6 or older. Generally, this regression shows expected results. More educated women are more likely to join the labor force, and women with young children are much less likely to join the labor force, about 30 percentage points for every child under the age of 6. I'm going to get rid of our NLF hat from before and predict it again using our new model. Pulling up the data browser, we can see we generally have a much bigger range of predicted probabilities here, going as high as nearly 100% here, and others going much lower than that. There is one limitation of the LPM that we need to be aware of, and that is that there is nothing stopping the predictions from going over 100% or under 0%, which of course we know is not possible for a probability. Let's see if that happened here by sorting our data by our NLF hat. Going back to the data browser, we can see that we have a few people in this data set where we have a negative probability of joining the labor force, one even as low as negative 44%. That's pretty remarkable, so let's think about why that's happening. First of all, this woman's husband has a very high income for 1975, about $74,000. Going over to some of the other variables, we can see that this woman has three kids under six, and of course, that's going to greatly reduce our predicted probability of joining the labor force. The other women who are also in the negatives for predicted probability, unsurprisingly, also have young kids under the age of six. Let's go all the way to the bottom of the data set and see how high these predictions get. You can see here that we have, again, several people who have a predicted probability of joining a labor force that is greater than 100%. Let's look at these last ones here. They have husbands making about seventeen to 18000 a year. Not a tiny amount, not a huge amount, but let's go over and look at some of their other variables. We can see, first of all, they are highly educated with 17 years of education, and they also have no children. So it's not surprising that we would predict they would be highly likely to enter the labor force. So is this limitation a big problem? 
It depends on what you're trying to do with your regression. If you are trying to simply predict the probabilities, it's a little bit uncomfortable to get those kinds of results. And if that's what you want to do, a logit or probit model might be a little bit more appropriate, which we are not going to cover in this video today. If what you're trying to do is just think about marginal effects, the linear probability model will do just fine. For example, if we want to know what is the effect of having another child on the probability of entering the labor force, minus 30% is our answer, and we don't really care if that's going to knock us under 0%. The other big advantage of the LPM is the interpretation is very simple. We can just look at these numbers, and that is the marginal effect on the probability, whereas those more complex binary choice models require a little bit more work to think about those questions. That's where I'll leave it today for the LPM. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thanks for watching.